The first officer normally performs this procedure. The captain may perform it as required. Flight control panel, check. Flight control switches, guards closed. Verify that the flight control low pressure lights are illuminated. The low pressure lights illuminate to indicate low hydraulic system A or B pressure to ailerons, elevator and rudder. Flight spoiler switches, guards closed. This is the normal operating position. Your damper, on. If the B flight control switch is in the on position, the main yaw damper engages to the main rudder power control unit. If the A and B flight control switches are in the standby rudder position, the standby yaw damper engages to the standby rudder power control unit. Verify that the yaw damper light is extinguished. The light illuminates if the yaw damper is not engaged. Verify that the standby hydraulic low quantity light is extinguished. The standby hydraulic low quantity light illuminates to indicate low quantity in the hydraulic reservoir. Verify that the standby hydraulic low pressure light is extinguished. The standby hydraulic low pressure light illuminates to indicate the output pressure of the standby pump is low. Navigation panel set. VHF nav transfer normal. The VHF nav transfer switch has three positions both on 1, normal, and both on 2. In the both on positions, the VHF navigation source is switched to VHF navigation receiver 1 or 2 respectively. In the normal position, the VHF navigation source is the default VHF navigation receiver. Inertial reference system transfer, normal. The IRS transfer switch has three positions both on left, normal, and both on right. In the both on positions, the flight instrument's attitude and heading source is switched to the left or right IRS respectively. In the normal position, flight instrument's attitude and heading source is from the default IRS. FMC transfer, normal. The FMC transfer switch is used to switch between the FMCs in case of failure. Displays panel, set, source, auto. The display source selector has three positions, automatic, all on one, and all on two. In the automatic position, display electronic unit one controls the captain outboard, inboard, and upper display units, and DEU two controls the first officer outboard, inboard, and lower display units. When a DEU fails, the other DEU controls all display units. Control panel select, normal. In the normal position, the left EFIS control panel controls the captain's displays and the right EFIS control panel controls the first officer's displays. In the both on one, both on two positions, control of both displays can be switched to the respective EFIS control panel. Fuel panel, Set. Verify that the engine valve close lights are illuminated dim. Verify that the spar valve close lights are illuminated dim. The related engine or spar fuel shutoff valve is closed when its light is illuminated dim. In transit, or the valve position and engine start lever or engine fire warning switch disagree when illuminated bright and open when extinguished. Verify that the filter bypass lights are extinguished. Crossfeed, closed. In the closed position, engine number one and engine number two fuel feed lines are isolated. In the open position, the fuel lines are connected. Verify that the valve open light is extinguished. The crossfeed valve is closed when the light is extinguished. When illuminated bright, the valve is in transit or valve position and the crossfeed selector disagree, and when illuminated dim, the crossfeed valve is open. Fuel pumps, off. 
Verify that the centre tank fuel pump low pressure lights are extinguished. Verify that the main tank fuel pump low pressure lights are illuminated. This indicates that fuel pump output pressure is low or the fuel pump switch is off. When extinguished, fuel pump output pressure is normal. Electrical panel set. Battery guard closed. Cabin utility power on. Electrical power is supplied to galley and cabin equipment systems, including the left and right recirculation fans and logo lights. IFE passenger seat power on. Electrical power is supplied to installed components of the passenger seats, in-flight entertainment systems and other power systems. Verify that the following lights are extinguished. Standby power off. Battery discharge, TR unit, and electrical. If the TR unit light is illuminated on the ground, any TR has failed. If illuminated in flight, TR1 failed, or TR2 and TR3 failed. If the electrical light is illuminated, a fault exists in the DC power or the standby power system. Note this only operates on the ground. Generator drive disconnect. Guards closed. These switches disconnect the generator from the engine in the event of a generator drive malfunction. Verify that the drive lights are illuminated. When illuminated, integrated drive generator low oil pressure is indicated. This is caused by IDG failure, engine shutdown, IDG automatic disconnect due to high oil temperature, or IDG disconnected through the generator drive disconnect switch. Bus transfer, guard closed. In the guarded position, bus tie breakers operate automatically to maintain power to the AC transfer buses from any operating generator or external power. Verify that the transfer bus off and source off lights are extinguished. Emergency exit lights, guard closed. Exit lights, indicating the approved emergency exits, are located throughout the passenger cabin. The system is controlled by the emergency exit light switch. With the switch in the armed position, the emergency exit lights are normally extinguished. If electrical power to DC bus number 1 fails, or if AC power has been turned off, the emergency exit lights illuminate automatically. Verify that the not armed light is extinguished. Passenger signs, set. No smoking, auto or on. Fasten belts, auto or on. Windshield wipers, park. Verify that the windshield wipers are stowed. Window heat, on. Position switches on at least 10 minutes before takeoff. Verify that the overheat lights are extinguished. The overheat lights are illuminated if an overheat condition is detected or if electrical power to the windows is interrupted. Probe heat off. Verify that all lights are illuminated. The lights are illuminated when the related probe is not heated. If operating on standby power, Probe heat lights do not indicate system status. Wing anti-ice, off. Wing anti-ice control valves are closed. Verify that the valve open lights are extinguished. When extinguished, the related wing anti-ice control valve is closed. The light is illuminated dim when the switch is on, opening the related wing anti-ice control valve. Engine anti-ice, off. Verify that the cowl anti-ice and cowl valve open lights are extinguished. When illuminated, the cowl anti-ice light indicates an overpressure condition in duct downstream of the engine cowl anti-ice valve. When extinguished, the cowl valve open light indicates the related cowl anti-ice valve is closed. When illuminated bright, the related cowl anti-ice valve is in transit, 
or the cowl anti-ice valve position disagrees with the related engine anti-ice switch position. When illuminated dim, the engine anti-ice switch is off and the related cowl anti-ice valve is closed. Hydraulic panel, set. Engine hydraulic pumps, on. Verify that the low pressure lights are illuminated. Electric hydraulic pumps, off. Verify that the overheat light is extinguished and the low pressure light is illuminated. Air conditioning panel, set. Air temperature source, as required. Trim air, on. The trim air pressure regulating and shutoff valve is signalled open. Verify that the zone temp lights are extinguished. Temperature, as required. Verify that the ram door full open lights are illuminated. Recirculation fan, automatic. In the automatic position, in flight the left recirculation fan operates if both packs are operating, unless either pack switch is in high and the right recirculation fan operates if both packs are operating unless both pack switches are in high. On the ground, the left recirculation fan operates unless both pack switches are in high and the right recirculation fan operates even if both pack switches are in high. Air conditioning packs, auto. Isolation valve, open. Engine bleed air, on. APU bleed air, on. Verify that the dual bleed light is illuminated. Verify that the following lights are extinguished. Pack, wing body overheat, and bleed trip off. Cabin pressurization panel, set. Verify that the auto fail and off schedule descent lights are extinguished. Flight altitude indicator, cruise. Landing altitude, destination field elevation. Pressurization mode, auto. Verify that the alt N and manual lights are extinguished. Lighting panel, set. Landing light, retract and off. Runway turn off light, off. Taxi light, off. Ignition select, ignition left or right. Alternate the ignition select switch position on subsequent starts. Engine start, automatic. In this position, ignition is normally off. Both igniters are activated when the engine start lever is in idle and an uncommanded rapid decrease in N2 occurs. Or N2 is between 50 and 57%, or N2 is between idle and 5% in flight. Automatic ignition is provided to the selected igniters when the engine is running and flaps are not up below 18,000 feet or engine anti-ice is selected on. Lighting panel, set. Logo light, as required. Position light, as required. Anti-collision light, as required. Wing illumination light, as required. Flight attendant spirit for takeoff, please. Wheel well light, as required. The pre-flight checklist is performed on the captain's command. The captain's pre-flight procedure is started after the first officer's pre-flight procedure is completed. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe.